All right. Uh, we saw a list earlier today, Sports Pack 12 on Twitter, which is if you have Twitter, you should absolutely follow them. They do a ton of good work tweeting out basically anything that has to do with Pac-12 football, sometimes basketball, on any national article. Sorry, I'm going bull riding. Can I, can I start our show? You're riding the bull now? No, I'm riding the bull, man. No, I was going to let you finish. Sorry, I just, I'm just i riding the bull. It's a Wednesday. We got some Red Bulls here in studio. I'm going to drink a Red Bull if you don't mind. Please drink a Red Bull over ice. Yeah, buddy. To do it. So I'm going to go half, just a little bit of Red Bull, and then I'm going to water it down. Okay. Uh, they, they tweeted out a list today that they said are the most consequential games for determining conference champions. Now, truthfully, I think you and I both agree there's maybe four of these games total. Utah-USC. Utah, Washington, Oregon, Washington, maybe Oregon, Stanford. Yeah, or maybe yeah, Washington, Stanford, yeah, depending I, on how well. Uh, it may, and it may be Washington State. There may be a, a team that comes out of nowhere. I don't think it'll be Cal, uh, but you know, Washington State is is kind of a wild card there. Everyone's betting on Oregon or Washington. Stanford really does replace a lot, so we'll we'll see how well they've developed players. And Stanford's schedule does not break their way. Stanford's schedule is very tough, so they may be a very tough eight- or nine-win team, but that wouldn't put them in the discussion. Maybe Washington State is that surprise team that could be contending down the stretch. So here's what I wanted to do today. Let's start with the Pac-12 North, so we can give ourselves a little bit more time at 3 o'clock, and we'll go through the Pac-12 South. But let's start with the Pac-12 North and just look at what we think the most important game is for each team in the Pac-12 this year? Like, wh- which game is going to determine, was it a successful season? Was it an unsuccessful season? Do they make a bowl game? Do they not make a bowl game? We can narrow it down to two if we have to, but I generally think we ought to be able to, to knock this thing down to a basically one a team because not everyone's going to make a bowl game, but maybe you beat that right team, and, and that ends up being uh, the most important game you play. Well, it, it's somewhat subjective, but I, I know a lot of people reacted to the, the list by Sports Pac-12 that they have their fourth most impactful game for either division, they have it being Oregon playing USC at the Coliseum. And there's a couple of things that are working there. First and foremost, the Utes lucked out this year. They do not get Oregon in their North Division rotation. This is a good year to avoid the Ducks. Maybe a couple of years from now you can catch them in the post-Crystal uh, Ball era if things fall apart. Yep. Uh, but I doubt that. I think I, I think the Ducks are going to be fine this year and next. We'll see how they replace Justin Herbert. But... USC is a team that I think is going to be playing a dramatically different brand of football at the end of the year than the beginning of the year. And so think about this. Either way, if if USC is struggling and Oregon goes into the Coliseum and thumps them, gets another conference win, uh, maybe that's uh, maybe that's something that is the tiebreaker over a team like uh, Washington because Washington does play USC as well. But then you look at, for USC, what if that's the tipping point? What if that's a 40-point loss and the Trojans say, we've had enough. We're 4-4. <laughs> yeah. four and four. We just lost by 40 points at home. we got to move on from Clay Elton. What's that going to do to USC's season? See, I see a lot of potential breaking points for the Trojans. And so if we're just talking about impactful games, either USC taking on Oregon at home or however you want to look at it, the Ducks going on the road, November 2nd. That's the eighth game of the year. Remember, USC plays uh, They play Utah, Washington, Notre Dame before that. They get a couple of weeks where they're going to have Arizona, and then they go to Colorado, but then they get Oregon, and they got to go to Arizona State. USC could really struggle this year. So let's go with the Oregon. What we think there, it, it really comes down to three games, and this is crazy. They're all on the road at Stanford, at Washington, at USC. If I'm an Oregon fan, which I am because my dad's Keith Gunther. Well, no, no, that's when well, no, my dad's Keith Gunther, oh, but thanks for being a Duck fan. We've been doing this for so long. Oh. Uh, it's got to be Washington because I'm hoping this year with the potential number one pick at quarterback. Uh, with a great defensive line, with the best offensive line in the country, Oregon's got to win the Pac-12 this year. And to do that, they've got to win the Pac-12 North. And the only other team that's really competing with them is Washington. So that game, October 19th, midseason, basically dead set in the middle of their year, at Washington has to be the biggest game. And it might be the biggest game in the Pac-12. Okay, yeah, but you took the obvious one, man. You took the easy one. It's okay. That's the big game. I was trying to make you think for a minute. Not Did it work? Make, you're not going to trick me into thinking. Yeah, that. that's the thing. I could tell. Not today, buddy. None of those pistons were firing. You still got that Vegas brain, homie. But yeah, of course, Oregon at Wash. Uh, Oregon, I'm sorry, uh, taking on Washington in Seattle, going to the Husky uh, to Husky Stadium is going to be the test that determines the North. Much like last year, we saw the Ducks lose at home in overtime to a good Stanford team, and that just about broke the season for the Ducks. They had a couple of other tough losses after that. And then, surprisingly, the Ducks bounced back. They beat Washington at home. The Ducks are just a much different team outside of Autzen Stadium. 
Autzen Stadium is one of the best home field advantages in all of the Pac-12. Uh, it is just a crazy situation for each and every team that comes in. Weather-wise, uh, volume-wise, the crowd is so loud. But these kids are used to it now, so I'm with you. Oregon taking on Washington on the road, going to Seattle. That's the matchup of the North. Can I give you my hot take And Washington? Because ideally we would think, well, you just flip it around then, and Washington's best game would be Oregon or the most important game. Well, how hot is it? I think they have an extremely dangerous trap game against the University of Utah. Because they will have played Oregon in Seattle the week before. And if let, let's say they do get a bye week, which is very nice. It's hard to have a trap game coming out of a bye week. But if you beat Oregon, you kick your feet up and you say, man, we won the Pac-12 North. This is over. And then you get a really tough Utah team. Yes, they go up to Seattle. You talk to beat Washington this year. Uh, and conversely, if Washington coming off that bye week beats Utah, they will close their season 3-0 and after that because they're going to go to Oregon State and win by a mile. Yep. They're going to go to Colorado and embarrass the Buffaloes there. And then they're going to probably beat up on their rival again in the Apple Cup uh, in a game that it may be a bad weather game again. And if that's the case, that's always going to favor the Huskies. Washington has a chance to be a very special team. They're over-under. It's so weird because... And Caesars, they put the over-under for Washington at nine wins. I can see them having a bad year being a 10-win season, uh, having a 10-win season. They play Oregon State and Colorado on the road. They play Arizona on the road. Uh, they have to go to BYU, hey, and that's going to be a tough one. Look but, at that six-game well, stretch starting with BYU. They will not escape unscathed from that. They will lose in that stretch starting yes, with BYU. Yeah, yeah, one. At they, they BYU, one. home against USC. At Arizona, home against Oregon, home against Utah, they will not be perfect coming out of that. They they will have a, they will have at yep. least one loss coming out of that group and maybe yep. two. Washington will lose one game there, and then they may lose one game. They're going to split Oregon and Utah. I do not believe that Washington is going to lose both of those games. If that happens, that'll dramatically shake things up in the North. So I, I'm assuming that Washington splits that game and maybe they drop one earlier, which still that's a 10 win season that gives you a lot of momentum heading into the championship Absolutely. game. They're very good. And at that point, they will have played Utah. If they meet in the championship game again, it'll be four times in a year. Sure. They're very good. Uh, you know, a calendar year, I should say. They're starting a quarterback who doesn't have a ton of starting experience. Some as a freshman. Has, hasn't played the last two years. They lost the best running back in team history. They lost a first-round draft pick at left tackle. They lost the first-round draft pick at corner. They lost a lot. They're great. They're a very good team. They can Washington's ab- defense they has can to absorb replace that. almost everyone. They can absorb those types of losses, but they're not going to be— 11-1 and one this year. I think they're going to lose a game along the way.